Well, good morning, everyone. Thanks for coming out. Uh, it's great to be out here in Vegas. Uh, thanks to Commissioner Yormark for getting this all set up, and uh, we're excited to uh, get things started here at the end of July. Uh, we're excited about our football team. We've got a lot of returning guys, uh, but as everybody does, they have all new a lot of new guys as well, so it'll be nice to mesh those guys together uh, come August. Competitive league, as usual, uh, great parity with uh, the amount of schools and new schools we have, especially the ones that we play, so we're excited about the challenge. All right, we'll go ahead and take questions. Again, please raise your hand. We'll get you a handheld microphone. Please stand, state your name and your affiliation. We have right down here in the third row on the right-hand side. Coach, you obviously came from North Dakota State, and there's been a few other notable coaches that have come from FCS, Division II, even NAIA with Kalen DeBoer and his success after his time at Sioux Falls. What does it mean to you to see these guys getting these opportunities um, from coaching in those ranks, and do you think those guys tend to be overlooked sometimes? Uh, I, I've said this since the day that I arrived in Manhattan and football is football and um, you know you just need opportunities and when you get opportunities and if you're if you're having success you're going to get those opportunities and, and I've known Kalen for a while was so excited for him with the run they made last year and there's a lot of good football coaches at all different levels and um, I think you're going to continue to see uh, coaches from NAI Division II FCS so forth get opportunities. We're on the left side in the fifth row. Yeah, Chris, Barry Trammell with the Tulsa World. The esteemed voters of the Big 12 preseason poll picked you guys second, but they put none of your guys on the all-conference team. How do you rectify those two decisions? Uh, don't pay a whole lot of attention to it, to be honest with you. Uh, everybody sees it, but uh, it's not something that we talk about an awful lot. Uh, I hope it shows people the overall depth and value of our roster and how important our uh, role players are and how important our players are as far as um, if you're a successful team, individual honors at the end of the season are going to come. I'm sure that our players, if you'd ask them, they probably saw both both polls and, and um, I don't know if they're uh, excited, disappointed, uh, but I know they were, aware, they were aware that there was nobody from K-State on, on one of those teams, but uh, you still got to perform and we've got a lot of work to do before we get to uh, end of the uh, end of August. We'll stay on the left side here or in the third row. Hey, Chris, Colin Wilson with the Action Network. Uh, the hiring Matt Wells comes in as co-offensive coordinator. He has a huge history with quarterbacks, uh, specifically 2018 Jordan Love at Utah State. What does he bring to Avery Johnson, and what led you to bring him in? Uh, Matt and I have been friends for. Um, more than a decade and had always talked even when he was at Tech and I was uh, here at K-State and then when he went to Oklahoma he and I have always stayed in contact and it was just maybe the right time for him to get back on the field and truly coach and um, we talked all through that bull prep and he was the one who, who I wanted to hire it was just trying to get through that uh, bowl time and, and uh, it worked out but um, a wealth of experience and a wealth of knowledge with quarterbacks and I've already seen in a short period of time just the the second semester the value uh, of him being with Avery uh, there's a great mesh there there's a great comfort between the two guys um, they uh, are on the same page an awful lot and and I know that Avery uh, as well as our offensive staff, coaches, Coach Riley, our offensive coordinator, are excited about some of the things that uh, Coach Wells is going to bring to K-State, especially in the past game. And, and uh, I know that everybody wants to know what the heck we're going to do, but uh, we'll wait until uh, the fall to unveil that. But uh, excited, super excited to have Matt and his family in Manhattan. Okay, we'll go over here to the right side in the center. Hey, Chris. Uh, Kevin Fielder from EMA Online. Uh, the secondary returns a lot of talent from last year. How important is that as you guys transition into this season with, you know, a fairly similar defensive structure? 
Uh, it's really important. There's such talented offenses in this league, really good quarterbacks, really good skill players. And so for us to have book in corners back and Keenan Garber uh, and Jacob Parrish is, is really important for, for us. Those guys have played a lot of football. And then to have most of our safeties. VJ Payne's played a ton of football. Marquis Siegel, who's with us, has played a lot of football. Colby McAllister's played a lot. And then we've got some freshmen that are ready to, to step up as redshirt freshmen. Uh, a couple of transfers, a kid named Jordan Riley that I, I think people are going to learn and know an awful lot about by the end of the season. But you, you need to have great depth in the secondary and, and we feel that uh, that's an area that we have done a really good job of recruiting and developing talent and then sprinkling in a transfer uh, because you need to be really good in the secondary in this league. We'll go to the left side about three-fourths of the way back. Uh, yes, Brian Peterson with AZ Desert Swarm. You kind of have the unique nature of playing 10 conference games with the Arizona game not counting towards it. Was there any discussion of pushing that off because of the fact that they're in the league now? I think it was probably too late when everything got uh, got finished up with scheduling. And uh, I'm glad that uh, uh, we're playing Arizona. Uh, they're uh, a terrific football program, and it's a great early season game for the Big 12 to get on national TV on a Friday night. So that excites uh, us, and I know it excites Arizona. There's really good talent on both teams. I I'm hoping we ultimately get to an even number of conference games so that we're not on the nine, five away, four at home, then it's more of a, a four and four split of eight games or even a 10, because if you're going to have to play a power five, you might as well play it in your league and get five and five. But uh, um, no, I, it's, it's going to be a great game. It's going to be a great uh, showcase for the Big 12 uh, in early September. Back here on the left side again in the center. Don Williams from the Lubbock Avalanche Journal. Coach, uh, I believe you play a five teams that are either new to the conference or second year in the Big 12. To what extent, if any, did that mean any extra work in preparation for your coaching staff? Yeah, it uh, it definitely gave us a lot more uh, work in the summer. And, and the month of June is already busy enough with recruiting and camps. And now we're, we don't have the, the the database like you'd have against a with a Tech or a, a Baylor or a TCU. Uh, we've got five, five new schools or even BYU and Cincinnati have been in our league, but we didn't play them last year, so we don't have much data on them. And then we've got the two Arizona schools in, in, in Colorado. So uh, a, a lot of extra work. Uh, I think it's excitement, though, for the fans. Uh, for both schools as far as whether it's us going to Provo and seeing a great environment because I've been there and I know it's a phenomenal environment to us going to Boulder and seeing a great environment or those other schools potentially coming to our place and seeing a great environment in Manhattan. I think the fan base uh, of all the schools uh, are going to be excited because they're going to see really good football and they're going to see some different teams uh, that they haven't seen throughout the year. Right down here in the front row. Uh, Kenneth Barry, touchdowns and tangents. Uh, Coach, obviously you lose a lot of, you know, senior leadership in BB, what he meant to the offensive line, and obviously the offensive line being the quarterback's best friend. How have you kind of just this offseason, you know, tried to get the old line to kind of embody his spirit? And when will he, you know, be put in the ring of honor? Uh, I, I don't probably make that decision, but Beeb's had a phenomenal career, and he will be in the ring of honor for sure. Um, but it's interesting. We lost four really good senior offensive linemen, uh, but we have four really good senior offensive linemen returning. And that's something that uh, um, maybe goes overlooked a little bit, the, the value of what Connor Riley does for our offense and for our program and for that room in the offensive line room to lose the amount of seniors that we had. And then still return the amount of seniors. Hadley Panzer, Taylor Poitier, Carver Willis have really taken over the reins from those guys that have left and have tried to keep that engine running. And we've always been really, really good up front, uh, and it's due to Coach Riley. But it's those guys that have been in the program that want to stay and want to be developed and not want to get in the transfer portal just because they don't play in their first year. And an offensive line is a different deal. It takes sometimes a few years to to develop. And, um, you know, we're, we've got 
got Hadley and Carver back that have played a lot. TP's played a lot. Uh, Andrew Linegang's going to play a lot of football that, that's that been around. Sam Heck's going to play a lot of football that's been around. So we have experienced guys that have been with our program. They're just going to gain on-field experience quickly in the non-con. Okay, on the right side, about three-fourths of the way back. Hi, Coach Kleeman. Alex Blackburn, College Football Dogs. Uh, going from the offensive line to the defensive line here, how important will the physicality and experience up front defensively be given the talent of the ground games in this conference as well as the importance of the pass rush? Yeah, we've been really fortunate that uh, we've always had a lot of depth in our defensive line. Coach Tui and, and, and Coach Wyatt do a great job. And we're probably going to have eight or nine deep uh, on the defensive line. And we've always rotated guys really well. But, uh, you know, we've got two six-year senior defensive ends in Brendan Mott and Cody Stuffelbean coming back that, that have been in the program for a long time. And they'll, they'll hold those young kids that are going to play a lot to a high standard and to a high, of ex high expectations. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm really comfortable and excited about the amount of defensive line, defensive of linemen that we have uh, that have played a lot of Big 12 football, as well as some of the new guys that we have coming on, some freshmen that will be redshirt freshmen uh, that I think can really be effective pass rushers. And there's no doubt about it, you've got to be able to stop the run and you've got to be able to get a good rush on the passer. Okay, we'll go far left side, fifth row. Hey, Chris, Jen and Carlson with Beyond the Box Score. You guys played Oklahoma State last year when Ollie Gordon was just getting going. You obviously know what really good running backs look like at K-State. I'm curious just what impresses you about him, and obviously they'll be in, Man in Manhattan this year. What's the challenge of handling him? Yeah, he's a tremendous talent. He's got really good speed. He's a home run hitter as well as he can run through arm tackles. And uh, he had a breakout season, and it probably started around our game, and he continued to elevate. And um, he's a terrific football player, and we're glad we play him in Manhattan and not Stillwater. We've struggled in Stillwater, and we've played better in Manhattan. But that's, it's, that's the nature of our league. You're going to face really talented running backs each week. You're going to face talented quarterbacks, and um, you You've got to stay healthy, and you've got to do a great job of, of trying to eliminate explosive plays. And, and last year, Ollie got us on a couple big ones, and we've got to prevent that. On the right side, second row right here in the middle. All right. Coach Lynn Harrington with Stay Alive and Power 5. How are you doing today? Good. That's good to hear. So we're going to talk about you have one of the most talented running backs in this league and DJ Giddens. Last season, he split carries with Treshawn Ward. Do you plan on giving him more of a workload this fall, or how is that going to work out with the Yeah, it, it'll probably pretty, be pretty similar uh, in the fact of, of DJ can carry it 30 times, and he did that a few times for us last year. He can carry it 20 times. DJ's an every down back, and I think he's tremendously underrated in our league. Um, DJ is just a phenomenal football player uh, that's a great kid, great pass protection, great um, uh, out of the backfield catching the ball. He's going to have a dynamite year for us we just have surrounded him now with some more talent that uh, we don't maybe have to rely on him as much there's some games that we are we're going to give it to him and, and he'd be ready for it and there's other games where we've got to spread it around more and we've got to throw the ball a little bit more um, so that the op the offense or the running game does open up and so we got another tailback in Dylan Edwards that's a really good complement to to DJ with you know kind of kind of some speed uh, as well as a, a electricity and elusiveness in the open field so um, that's the thing that probably excites us the most as offensively we have a lot of guys around Avery final question will come on the left side halfway back coach Jason Shear Wildcat Authority uh, for the four new teams to the conference that maybe aren't familiar with Kansas State how would you describe your brand of football uh, consistent um, don't beat themselves Try to play really good defense. Try to rush the football. Try to you know not turn the ball over uh, and hit the explosive plays when you have the opportunity. But uh, uh, hopefully a physical brand of well-disciplined kids that that play the game the right way. And uh, I'm excited because of all those teams. We're going to find out a lot about them too because there's really talented football teams coming into this league. And uh, that's why it's so hard to predict how any order of finish could be with all the new teams that are coming in.